What's up everybody? Travis here from Brinkit Company and finally we're doing the long-awaited Stinger transition tutorial in After Effects. Uh, a lot of you guys have asked about it and if it wasn't for having to move and the pain in the ass that that was, this would have been done a long time ago. But you know, we're here now so let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, so here's the finished product and so there's a few key points here. One is you'll notice that the background is currently the very colorful Fortnite, and then on the other side is the very blue shaded one. That's just to illustrate what the effect does. And then you'll also notice that at some point in the animation we have 100% screen coverage. Um, that's absolutely necessary because you don't want people to see the scene cut in the background. And that's about it. So it's a pretty simple thing to do. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, so let's just get started. So the first thing we want to do is create a new composition. So we'll go to Composition, New Composition. Uh, we'll just name it Stinger Transition. And the width should be 1920 and the height should be 1080. The frame rate should be 60 and the duration should be two and a half seconds. And hit OK. So these are these are supposed to be really quick. So you, know, you don't want them to be too long. Uh, you can go a little bit longer if you want. That's totally up to you. Uh, I prefer to keep them as fast as possible, but still make them look decent. So the first thing we're going to want to do is double click the ellipse tool. If you're not on ellipse, just click and hold and change it to ellipse. And then go to, if it's not already, expand the shape layer. Go to ellipse 1. Go to ellipse path 1. Uncheck the constrained proportions and set both numbers to 1080 and then hit S on shape layer one, hit the stopwatch and move ahead about 40 frames and turn the scale up till it has full coverage. Go back to the beginning and then turn the scale to zero. So that kind of looks like this now. And that's cool, it's a little boring, but we'll take care of that in a little bit. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move ahead a little bit to say mm, frame 90 and add another keyframe for the scale. <clears throat> so it looks a little boring right now, but that's okay. We're gonna fix that. So let's go ahead and add a mask to our shape layer. So hit the ellipse tool again. And over here you have to change it to tools create mask and then double click. And you'll notice that it creates a mask it's just very, very large. So we're going to take the shape of the mask and we're going to set the left to zero, the top to zero, right to 960 and bottom to 960. And all that's going to do is give us a perfectly round mask and then we can go ahead and just move it back into place. And we'll change the mask to subtract. Okay. And then from there, we want to change the mask expansion all the way down. We want it to go very, very low. And so now what we've got is this will animate in as it was. And let's go to frame 40, set a keyframe on mask expansion, move ahead to about uh, 130 frames and then turn the mask expansion up until it gets rid of the entire background. So now we have this, it comes in and then it goes away. And that'll be how we're gonna dissolve the effect. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is add our logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag in the Brink and Company logo and I'm gonna scale it down just to kind of what I want it to look like by the end of this. Um, Yeah, it looks pretty good. <clears throat> and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit S to bring up the scale. We're going to hold shift and hit R to bring up the rotation. And then we're going to hit T to bring up the opacity. And these are the three things we're going to animate to kind of bring in the logo. So go back to the shape layer, hit U, and that'll just bring up all the active keyframes. So let's see, our animation for the beginning stops here. So we'll set keyframes on all three of these. 
and then we'll go ahead to uh, 60 frames and then we'll check these the middle box which is just the add keyframe oops because that is our final position so that we'll go back to the beginning and animate the starting position and let's see uh, let's turn the rotation backwards to about 75 let's bring the scale up really big and let's bring the opacity down and then we'll go to about uh, 60, 50 frames, and we'll turn the opacity all the way up. And so kind of what we'll have now is this. That looks pretty good. Again, we're going to tweak all these animation speeds so it looks a little bit better, has a little bit more impact, but for now this will work. So let's see, the next thing we want to do is get the uh, goat animating off as well as the background. So we'll double click the ellipse tool again for the goat. We will go to the mask layer and set it to subtract. We'll turn the expansion down as much as we have to to get full coverage back on the goat. We will set a keyframe and we'll go to the end and we'll turn that up. Now what I want to do here is I kind of want it to match what the background mask is doing. So we'll double click the second keyframe and we'll type maybe 6,000. Okay. And hit okay. And let's just see. All right, so that animates off super fast. So maybe 5,000. Nope. Uh, 2,000. Getting closer. Okay, that should be pretty close. Uh, Actually, I lied. Well, it's gonna happen very fast anyway, and there's a lot of things that we're gonna do. And you could tweak this as much as you want, obviously, so feel free to do that. The next thing we're gonna do is turn on the motion blur for both layers and for the comp. Okay, we're gonna go to both layers, select it, hit U. So let's work on tweaking some of these animation timings a little bit. So we'll grab the first one, the first two keyframes, and we will hit F9. And that's not bad, but we're gonna make it better. So let's go ahead and open the graph editor, select the second keyframe and pull it back. Hold shift while you're pulling it back so it stays locked on that axis. That's a lot better. See how it's got a lot more pop now. And we're going to do the same thing for the second one, but going the opposite direction. And we'll do the same thing for the ending goat animation. Select those two keyframes. And this one here is kind of the hard, harder one to tweak because you kind of want it to look like it's slamming the ground, but you don't want it to do it in a linear fashion. So let's see what we can do with this. Well, first let's change all these to easy ease keyframes. And my biggest problem with it is that it it's rotating before it's actually falling, which I don't like. It takes a long time for the scale to change to make it look like it's falling. So maybe we'll turn the rotation or we'll push the rotation forward a little bit. Oh, see, I don't like that either though. Okay, let's play with the graph editor for the scale. So maybe It'll start off kind of slower and then speed up. And maybe if we duplicate that for the rotation, it'll look pretty good. I'm just kind of experimenting here right now, and you guys are free to do the same. Um, 
There we go. Yeah, actually, I, I kind of like that. It gives it enough speed for the motion blur to kick in, and it looks pretty good. So that's going to do it for the actual uh, Stinger transition itself. And now you just need to export it. So to do that, go to Window, Render Queue, and grab your comp and pull it down here. And go ahead and click on uh, Lossless and let's see, Format. We want to do a QuickTime video. Under Video Output, we want to do RGB plus Alpha. This is going to give us the transparent video. Let's see, let's go to Format Options. Everything here looks good. Default. We're not doing any audio, so we can ignore that. OK. Hit OK. Uh, output to Documents. And hit Render. And there you go. That's all you have to do. And if you want to know how to actually integrate this into Streamlabs OBS or OBS, uh, there's a video on my channel for that. It'll show you how to set it up real quick. It's very easy. And that's all there is to it, guys. So thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, I'm really glad I was finally able to get you guys this one. Um, sorry it took so long. And we definitely have a lot more to come. So thanks again for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.